If you're into doing portraits, you're probably asking yourself, should you or should you not have prints made of your work? So in my house, I have my wife, I have my son over here, he was goofy at the, uh, the Christmas time era, and then I have one over here of another one I did of him. That was years ago. And I had people from my church in my house that saw my images on my wall right here and said, I want images just like that of my kids. So does it pay to have prints in your own house of your work? Absolutely. So today we're gonna dive in and talk about how to take and edit portraits. Let's get started. What's up guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Steven Tillman. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that photography is one of my passions. And so I teach it here on my channel. So I've been diving in a little bit recently to a portrait era. I do portraits a lot, I do weddings, I do things like that. My main, throughout the week, which is kind of cool if you want to take up this blueprint of your work, of your way that you do things, real estate is constant all the way through, which makes it where I can actually charge more and charge what I feel I am more worth because I'm not so hungry for the money, if that makes sense. So let's dive into the computer. We're gonna be looking at some portraits I did of a family. As I say, as I said before on my other portrait video, which you can actually look right here and see how I posed, what my mindset was, placing the flash and things like that. So this is a very simple uh, black backdrop. And uh, I'll leave some links below. Um, highly recommended backdrops, they're about two, 225 225 american dollars and these backdrops are phenomenal you can load them up and take them anywhere i have a white one in the corner right there in the box and you just pull it up it's like a, a screen like you would put a projector on you just pull it like that set it there take the photos you know take your light and then collapse it it's transportable it's it's amazing anyway so what we're going to do is, like I told you before, I get my filter going. I go through and I star each one according to if I want to keep it or not. So what I did originally was I went, took all these photos. So if you push D on your keyboard, you'll go from library to develop mode. And that'll make the, the image um, where you can begin to do all your editing stuff and all that. So this one right here, I think is, actually, let me go to... So I made him laugh and do some goofy faces. And this one right here is a very like headshot type uh, photo. So here's the actual shot, obviously. So let's get into how we make it black and white. Well, first of all, if you've ever shot a wedding or you've done any kind of photography and you're in a uncontrolled environment, say you're inside so you can you uh, manipulate your white balance to read like the orange tungsten or whatever you got going on, and then maybe there's another light that, especially those big, long rectangular lights, I don't know what it is, but sometimes they're just different temperatures and they end up putting off a green color. These in here do that. There's actually a light back there that I turned off that it, it lights up things. But if you're doing a white balance to something that is orange and something green shows up, well, uh-oh. Sometimes your safest bet is to turn something black and white. Now this shoot was for black and white, but sometimes you can save face and still make the image look really good because there's something about black and white that it seems to somehow capture a lot more of emotion and gives a, a certain weird depth to it that you can't get in a color image. If you push I on your keyboard, you'll see up here, right there, you have information popping up the image what the resolution was, and then you have my settings. So I did this, did this at 1 over 80, f6.3, ISO 500 at 70 millimeters. I used a 24 to 105, f4. So this is an f4, you can see your eyes are, are very sharp. Now I'm not gonna go through and nitpick all these little hairs and stuff like that. If you're doing a fashion shoot or something like that, maybe senior portraits, that may be wise to spend time doing that. One way to start doing that is the vibrance. You can see how all of a sudden it just took a turn. Saturation, now what I like to do is play with 
the different sliders. So I like to go from extreme to extreme because I want to know exactly what it's doing. And you can't see any better than going from extreme to extreme of exactly what's going on in the sliders. See, now that I have saturation down, my vibrance doesn't do anything. But if I have vibrance all the way down and I use saturation, you could see that it actually still can manipulate it. So you bring down your saturation. Now, this is something kind of cool is that your temperature and tint actually still, you look at the shadows. Now everything's affecting light and dark instead of colors, which is kind of cool. So you could see how all of a sudden it just, it popped, brightened it up a little bit. Now you bring back the vibrance and saturation and that does not look that great, but command Z, command Z. There's nothing wrong with that. She got a little lip ring. Uh, there's not really, she has freckles, so there's not a whole lot of skin retouching to do. And then you can go, like I've told you before on sharpening, you see how this is up. You can do a smaller radius. I like smaller radius. And if you push option, hold that, see how it's none and then mask it to where it is. And so it gives a defining or it gives definition to the detail instead of just a blanket sharpen over every single thing. And I like to do a little bit of a post crop vignetting just a little bit, depending on how dramatic you're trying to be. But I mean, you're doing a black and white photo, so you want it to be a little dramatic to kind of explain how I have my light set up for a woman. Uh, they are more particular about uh, age showing men, not so much. Matter of fact, if you shoot a man, you can do the image more dramatic and harder to one side of the face and actually Exenuate lines and you know the smiles and the all, all the, the things on a man's face well a woman didn't want that they want to look younger they want to feel younger so the way you do that is you actually put the light directly above them and so any line that there is the flash will pop and it will fill in every line that is created by shadow it'll put extra light in there and so it will actually fill in a lot of the gaps and not have a dramatic shot with men they don't care they start getting lines everywhere and it makes them look more rugged and you know the st you know stereotypical man shot so for my light setup here what i did was i took a constant light and i put it over the top of the black backdrop so i had it a uh it was a one by four over the top shining down and so that kind of gave a hair light it kind of separated them a little bit but you see also that i had it at f.6 now if i had went down to f4 you would have been able to see that light more but i was trying to make sure that there was no extra light that i didn't want to explain constant light and flash there are two things on your camera settings that you need to understand so your f-stop that f right here this right there whatever that is the larger that number is the less you'll be able to see your flash when it pops off so your f-stop actually will, or your aperture will control how much flash you see. So say you take an image outside and you get your exposure for the back, well then you pop off the flash and you're wanting that depth of the, the creamy background. And so you have your aperture at 2.8 if you have a lens that goes that low and you pop it off with the flash and all of a sudden it's super bright on her face. Well, common sense tells you you need to adjust your flash a little bit but let's say that you're trying to do it in the moment, you're trying to hurry, you're on a time schedule, and the creamy background isn't a necessity. What you can do is actually up that f-stop to like a 6.3 or even an f8. Yes, you'll get more of the background in focus, but your flash will then be dulled down and it'll be softer on the face because the, the flash, uh, how the camera reads it, is controlled by the f-stop. So your ambient light, this is constant light. So this little guy right here, that right there, when you do a photo shoot and you're outside and you have a bright sun, and the, just a little tip, always shoot in the shade. But say you have someone in the shade, but behind them, it is extremely, extremely bright because it's a sunny day. It's when the client needed you to be out there and schedule with them, and it was the only time you can do it. Well, what do you do? If you're using flash, this is a very simple process. Your shutter speed, okay? Your shutter speed controls ambient light. Ambient light is constant light that you're not flashing. It's just everything that is already there. Now this could translate over into real estate stuff. Your ambient light is all the lights that are on. And so if you're popping off your flash, you have a, a f-stop to control how bright that is. And you're balancing that with your shutter speed. 
Now, when you dip into the ISO, that right there is like the burrito coming around the five layers, if you know what I'm saying. The ISO controls all light coming in, whether it's flash or whether it's ambient light, it controls everything that the, that the camera can see. Your f-stop only controls the flashlight, flashlight. Your shutter speed controls the ambient. So the trick is to get very good at balancing these two. Because if you're trying to get a certain look or you're trying to have more of a, a, a dulled down background because we want that, we don't want the background to pull away from the subject. So to do that, you put that shutter speed a little higher and that will bring down the light. So the, the higher the numbers are, except for ISO, this gets a little confusing. ISO, the higher the number, the more light let in. Okay, the shutter speed and the f-stop, the higher the number, the darker the image will be. Because you're you're making the shutter, the higher the number, it's one thousandth of a second. So that's super, super fast. And you go slower, you have a tenth of a second, it goes... Okay, so you're letting in more light that way because it opens and it comes back. So f-stop controls flash. The shutter speed controls the ambient. And those two together, you balance those out for a flash shot. And then you have your ISO that manipulates and controls everything. There's no special nothing about the ISO. It's like the boss of everything. So if you have, say you get your, your shutter speed the way you want it for the background, and say you get your f-stop the way you want it to adjust your flash, and let's say just throwing a hypothetical out there, your image is still a little bright, or it's not bright enough. Well, if you have the proper settings in both of those, and then you can adjust your ISO, you can bring everything that you've adjusted, those same settings will still apply, but now you're just taking everything and making it brighter or making it darker. And so that's pretty much the basics of photography, how to do flash photography. So when I do real estate, I keep my f-stop at the same the entire time. Why? Because I want my flash. All I do is control the flash power on the flash, not in the camera, because I want what it looks like in the camera to be the same across every image. I want the depth. The f-stop also controls depth. If you've seen or taken images that are, um, they have a subject and they have a really creamy background, well, that's from the f-stop. The lower that number is, the creamier the background. Well, the lower that number is also the more the light comes in. So you have to adjust all of these things to get your image the way, that's why it's very, very, very important to know these things before you tell somebody you'll shoot their wedding because that's hopefully the only time they do it in their life. And if you mess that up and you don't know what you're doing or say you have your shutter speed a little too low and images are blurry and you're not focusing right, then they will never hire you again. And chances are they will leave a review or tell someone else that eh, you probably need to go with somebody else. Now, it's not that I'm some super duper professional photographer, but I've done this. And I'm telling you, practice, practice, practice. Know your camera. Know your lenses. A big expensive lens like this, this one goes down to 2.8. It also goes, this is why I, I got it for, you know, shooting far away. It goes from 70 to 200. That 2.8 says that it's very good in low light. It's one of the best you can get, especially with the zoom and a focal length that much. This one right here. But this only goes to f4. Now, does it work? Yes, it works. That means I have to bump up my ISO. Well, the higher the ISO, especially if you have a cheaper camera, the more grainy and nasty looking and gritty looking the images are. So you have this not that great looking image and sometimes it can bite you. So that's kind of the basics of shooting in black and white. You take your image, you have your light the way you want it. And that way, when you get into uh, the black and white and manipulation of all that stuff, you can be able to adjust and play like you want it, get it to where you want it to, do a little bit of a, you may want it real, 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 real black, maybe a little more contrast or a little less, whatever, play with it, have fun with it, adjust your white balances, see what it does when you go from hard left to hard right, and just have fun with it. But practice, practice, practice. You, I've done this before. I, I thought that I knew what I was doing, and so... When I thought that, I told somebody I would charge a certain amount, and this was in real estate, this wasn't a wedding. 
They never hired me again because I thought I knew what I was talking about and I never actually practiced. I didn't put into practice what I thought I knew. And once I was at the job, I was fumbling with my flash. It was a little speed light, a little small thing. And it was my first kind of trying to break into real estate. I had no clue what I was doing. And I wish I would have just taken the time just around the house to practice and get to know my lights. That's another important thing. You need to know your lights. You need to know your camera. You need to know your lenses. And you need to know the settings and what each setting manipulates and controls for the camera to be able to see. If not, you'll lose clients. You won't be able to make it. And it'll just be a hobby that you'll be frustrated with because you're wondering what could have been. Well, you could have just taken a little time and studied a little more and really practiced. You got this. You can do it. See y'all next time and have a great one.